So here we are again. This time I got Momo here, be all thematic and stuff. So let's dive right in. Legend of Korra, book four, episode two, Korra Alone. Now this episode really focused primarily on the character of Korra and what she's been doing for the last three years, um, which was a really interesting way to take it. A um, big flashback episode. But it was also really good because that was one of my biggest complaints of the first um, episode was that it's been three years, nothing's changed, nothing's happened. And this really shows you why um, that Korra, I guess, is the one that has changed the most, even though she's been doing arguably the least, just focusing on getting better. Um, I thought it was a really great way to continue this opening of this series. Um, so let's dive right into the review. First off, another comment about Janora. Yep, we see her again, standing on a dock with a bunch of other people who are doing the talking. They built up Janora so much at the end of last season and they haven't done anything with her yet except just let her stand just with everyone. Um, I feel like that's just a wasted opportunity that's ongoing now. I really hope that when Janora actually like gets her scene and is able to interact with the people and talk, I hope it's pretty big and pretty epic because they really led up to me believing she's the next Aang or something like that. The next thing is Katara's back. It's actually really awesome seeing her again. We haven't seen her, I don't think, since the first season of Legend of Korra. Um, so it's been a while, and I thought she was handled so well in this episode. Um, she's doing little Katara mannerisms and really talking like what I would imagine Katara at age 75 to talk like. I thought they did a really great job, and it was really cool seeing her mentor um, another avatar because she's already gone through that process with Aang, kind of mentoring him and teaching him water bending and stuff and basically being his best friend in the world. And now she gets the opportunity again to mentor Korra this time. Um, I didn't realize that Korra had lost the ability to walk. I knew she was like really weak and kind of wheelchair bound, but I always, I didn't, I guess, make the connection that she couldn't walk. So that was shocking um, in a good way for me when I first saw it in this episode that she had to relearn how to walk. I had thought um, when I had seen episode one that Korra maybe for the last six months has been in the undergrounds of Republic City just earning money by doing these fights and just trying to get her mojo back on I guess. But that's not the case. She was on like a whole pilgrimage and spiritual journey to find her self, find the avatar state, find her connection to the past avatars, to her spiritual self, just find that connection again. Um, so that was really interesting seeing her journey um, going across basically felt like the whole world, um, all the different landscapes and stuff. That was really cool. It was really fun seeing the one uh, fisherman guy who I guess knew Aang and you get to see that picture of Aang in the background. Um, I thought that was just a really fun nod to the previous generation. And then this whole inner demon struggle where I'll call it Phantom Korra is just like plaguing her mind. She keeps, I don't know if it's hallucinating or if she's really there, um, seeing this Korra in the Avatar state. And it turns, it, it eventually morphs into this Phantom Korra guiding our, our present day Korra to this um, earthbending match and then to the little dog. I'll get to the dog in just a second. And then ultimately confronting her in the swamp. So that was a really interesting progression of this phantom who has been with her. I kind of took it to be um, her own struggle with like her depression and the expectations of the world on herself. Um, I really enjoyed kind of seeing that visually represented in this episode. Okay, the dog. When it first came onto the screen, I was like, is that ju just a dog? Um, I kind of felt like our, our earlier cast, like Toph and them, when they were invited to the Earth King's birthday party, it's like, celebrate my birthday of my pet bear. And they're all like, wait, don't you mean like armadillo bear or some other type of bear? Nope, just bear. So I was just like, is it ju just a dog? 
I don't know, this doesn't really have a lot to do, but it was, I was glad to see it was a spirit <laughs> disguising itself as a dog, because I was like, that's, that's weird, just, just a dog, okay. Um, but then this um, dog spirit, let's see, leads Cora into the swamp. Um, she ends up confronting her Cora phantom self, and they end up fighting, Cora gets her butt kicked, and then wakes up in a cave. Um, and lo and behold, it's tough. Who would have guessed? I did. As soon as the spirit led Cora into the swamp, and Cora's like, why are you bringing me here? What, what are you wanting to show me? And the spirit's like, it's not a what, it's a who. I was like, tough. I bet you it's tough. And I was right. Um, I'm not mad that it's tough. I'm actually excited to see Toph again and see where this character goes. But it was kind of like a nitpick I have with the t first trailer, that or the main trailer that was released for book four. Um, where at the very end, you have Korra giving her line, I can't believe it. Toph? It's like, no, that's really cool. I'm excited to see Toph, but you are, you kind of sh showed your hand. Like, we don't have that suspense, that really shock of, oh, Toph? Really? Are you serious? There's a lot of people were probably expecting it. Um, I really hope it's good. I think it can be handled really well, and so far has been handled really well. I was just a little disappointed that Sometimes you get those big moments and it's if someone just tells you like the spoiler or the twist end of something and then you see it, it still can be a really awesome moment in an awesome movie, but it's been ruined. You don't get that initial moment where you experience that twist. Um, so that was a little disappointing. That's a nitpick again. I love Toph referring to Korra as Twinkle Toes, kind of like callback. So that was really cool. I'm really excited um, to see where this show is going. All in all, a great episode. It's really great bringing us up to speed with now, first episode, where the world is three years later. Second episode here, where Korra is three years later. It looks like we'll be able to dive deeper into Korra's character than we ever have been. And that's something I'm really excited about. Um, so we'll see what happens next episode.